Hey, so uh, Matilda asked me a few times to do like a video of all the books, all my books. So I'm just going to do a quick video of uh, lots of my books. First off, here's uh, a couple of books that were sent to me by a friend of mine. Um, basically, he had these extras. These are Clark Axton Smith. I've only read, nearly finished one of them, but I'm a bit slow with finishing off reading books at the moment. Um, yeah, my mate Spenny sent me these. Clark Ashton Smith, who's a, like a contemporary of Lovecraft, they used to write to each other and use each other's elements uh, in their stories. Clark Ashton Smith came up with the Book of Abon, which is kind of like this um, an ancient tome, a bit like the Necronomicon, basically. And Lovecraft did use the the Book of Abon in his stories as well. But here's a book that I won off of a mate of mine. Uh, I was hoping to interview her on my channel, but she's not got back to me. Uh, I've not actually read it yet. I won it. She's like a young, young fiction author, young adult author. But I just stopped reading books for some reason. Just stopped getting into them. Uh, this is a a Christmas Cthulhu. The light in here is terrible. Sorry about this. I started reading that one. I've got about halfway through. <laughs> this is another one I've not read yet. This is another one of my friends. This I've let, I've interviewed this lady on my channel, Natasha Danzig. Uh, this is the house that ate bone. Uh, a horror. Hopefully I'll get around to that at some point. Maybe I'll get Matilda to pick it up and uh, we can do a read-along. <laughs> um, actually, another, oh, here's, uh, here's a couple of books Matilda may know. <laughs> this is the one we're doing a read-along of at the moment. Um, Isle of the Dark by Rena Brown and uh, Isle of Winternox, the little, little Christmas kind of addition to it. Uh, where's my... Here's uh, another book from Natasha Danzig that I am currently reading. I've got about halfway through on this one as well. This one is basically it's, an, it's called uh, Underground Tales. It's an accompaniment to her, one of her albums. She had an album called Underground, and it's basically a song for every sort of like like this this story for every song of the of the book of the album. So it's like a, you know it's the fleshing out of the lyrics kind of thing. So you've got the idea behind what, you know what the story is. All right, we've got a few books up here. Up here we have my Sven Hassel books and my West Ham United football books. Oh, and a dictionary. There's a dictionary there. And then these books are war books by Sven Hassel. I used to read those as a teen. Uh, really quite interesting, very dark, you know, violent and uh, interesting stuff. There's another dictionary there on top. And then there's a couple of West Ham books. West Ham Till I Die and An Irrational Hatred of Luton. Uh, Robert Banks, quite good books. Oh, there's my Vampirella books on the top there. Got three books from Vampirella. That I, I bought those at a jumble sale when I was young, really young. And um, when I say really young, I don't know how old I was, but like, I don't know, maybe 10 or so. I've, uh, I don't remember the days. Right, then we've got some more uh, books here from West Ham. Tony Cotty, one of our old players. The Julian Dick story. Paolo Di Canio. And the boys of 86 is like the highest position that West Ham had uh, in the, I think it was his third one year. I wasn't even really watching football or interested in football. When I was young, I was more into speedway, which was motorbike racing, because that's what I used to go to with my dad's. But West Ham was always my team, but never really like, uh, I was going to try and stand up and get those uh, Vampirella books down so I could show you the covers, but uh, I'm not sure if I can reach them. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can reach you. I don't know, I've got nothing here to stand on at the moment. Let's have a quick, uh, can I get there? Oh yeah, and then there's another, oh yeah, Douglas Adams, uh, Last Chance to See. Douglas Adams, of course, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and this was like a conservation kind of book. So let's have a look at my Vampirellas. Ron Goulart, I don't know who, who he was, but yeah. I don't know if these are collectible or, or, or rare at all. Soon to be a major film. It was a film, but it wasn't major in the slightest. <laughs> it was a terrible movie. Uh, you have to watch... Uh, over easy modes um, video on the Vampirella movie to get an idea, but it's cool art on it, you know. Great art. She's a beauty. I, I mean, um, I have, I did read these when I was, a, you know, at least once. Might be a good idea to re reacquaint myself with them as well. But we'll see. We'll see if I ever get round to it. And uh, what else is up there? And up the top there, over one thousand fantastic Earth facts. It says. I think I might have got that as Christmas for my aunt or something. <laughs> right, I've got another book up here. Oh, this is just a uh, one that I picked up from a charity shop. Oops, sorry about that. That's really bad. Let's uh, zoom out again. Yeah, I'm not guaranteeing any uh, any great <laughs> artwork, any camera work, sorry, on this uh, video. 
like Commando, True Brit. This is like comic books, all in one big thick book. Right, let's go upstairs. Let's go next door first. Right, you quite often see this bookshelves um, behind me when I'm doing my videos. A lot of these books here are my mum's. I may have read some of them. Uh, Dick Francis, Under Orders. I might have read that one. It's kind of like detect. It's like detective stories, but they all seem to be set in the world of horse racing for some reason. Uh, Tom Holt, like a comedic kind of book. There's an Agatha Christie, the murder in on the links. This one I remember buying, Demoniac. Uh, it was kind of weird. I think it was like a building that was built with full of traps and like monsters in it kind of thing for some reason. I can't remember the full story now. A long time ago since I read it. That was just some picture frame. P.G. Woodhouse, Sue Grafton, Clive Barker, The Hellbound Heart. That's the origin for the Hellraiser movies. You was actually talking about this to me, Matilda, a little while ago. Like Terry Pratchett, a few books here. Guards, guards. Um, Reaper Man, Sorcery, uh, The Colour of Magic. I'm not sure if I've read those. I'm, I may have. I know my sister loves uh, Terry Pratchett. She's read all his books. And uh, my mum would have read them as well. But I can't remember if I've actually read any of them. I know I've read some. This one, I have no idea what this is. C.G. Sansom, Sovereign. So compulsive until you reach its final page, you'll have to be almost physically prized away from it. So this is set in King, Jun King Henry the Eighth. Hmm. Stephen King, The Green Mile. Oh yeah, I read that when it was in little miniature books. It was come, it came out in like little mini books, like a few at a time. I don't know what happened to those actually. I definitely had those. Stephen King, Needleful Things, Winnie the Pooh. No, I read that. P.G. Woodhouse. I might have to give these a read. This P.G. Woodhouse. So I've listened to a few. Um, Audio things on it's quite a good old sort of style, uh, comedic kind of uh, you know, English manners and gentry and that kind of thing. Um, another Pratchett Carpe Jugulum, John Morbiter, The Trials of Rumpole. I think I've read that one. Uh, Story of O, this is my book. <laughs> this is really crazy. I've got the erotic classic Story of O. Uh, amongst all the uh, other stuff. Yeah, this is kind of like, yeah, it's just uh, filth, really. It's just filth. Um, yeah. Um, it's a sadomasochistic um, porn fest, I suppose. But it's supposed to be like, oh, uh, yeah. It's, uh, I did a review of it on my fanzine one time. Maybe I'll read it one day, <laughs> the review. Maybe I'll, do, maybe I'll read some of my fanzine reviews out for videos. Right, there's another Agatha for Christie. Patricia, Patricia Cornwell Post Mortem. I think I read that one. She's a, um, a coroner, I think. And she does, like, detective work. Right, then we've got some Harry Potters. I've never read any Harry Potters. My mum read them. My brother read them. I'm not sure if my sister read them. Right, Dean Koontz, Cold Fire. Pretty sure I read that. Stephen King... Maybe I read that one, I'm not sure. But right, here's the, the God's Trilogy, Terry Pratchett. Some more Harry Potter, Philosopher's Stone. Quidditch Through the Ages, J.K. Rowling. I think someone was watching my video the other day and they were like triggered because of the fact that none of these books are in the right order. <laughs> Might have been Matilda. I can't remember now. Uh, this is my book, The World's Most Evil Men. I remember buying this one. It's like basically, you know, Pol Pot, Emperor Bacassa, Idi Amin, um, Bill Miller. <laughs> I'm joking. Right, uh, Hogfather Terry Pratchett, Jingo Terry Pratchett. Uh, he's cool. I've started reading all these. I've actually read these on audiobooks, actually. I'm not sure if I've read any Angel of the I think I did read The Angel of the Lord. That's the one um, set oh, prior to the American Civil War. Some guy did some kind of what was considered terrorist action, and uh, something like that. And uh, yeah, and I think that's what the, the story, this song, uh, the Angel of the Lord, ha uh, Glory Hallelujah. I think it was based on on what he did. I, I think that was that, that this one. This one, I'm not sure if I've read it. I've read, I've seen the TV uh, show based on it, Longitude, the true story of a lone genius who solved the greatest scientific problem of his time. That was quite good about nautical stuff, about creating a timepiece that wouldn't lose any time, so they can. Oh, here's Mum's Pam Ayers books. Ah, oh, some more of me. I didn't, we had read these all as kids. I remember reading these as kids. I didn't know we still had these books. She's like a, a fun poet, Tess kind of thing. I might have to do some recitations on these. Those are good. I remember reading them as a kid. I bought her a more updated one as well, a few years before she died. Uh, more Harry Potter, P.G. Woodhouse again. Jeeves book, more Terry Pratchett. Uh, the number one lady detective agency. And Alexander McCall Smith. Stephen King, Chris, 
Oh, Cad is that Christine? Yeah, I read that one. That's one. I, that's my book probably. Sanctum by si Simon Toyne. Not sure if I know that one. Sanctus. Sorry, I might have read that one. I think this might have been. Um, yeah, yeah. This is one of the ones my bought me from a charity shop. So this is my. This is what I. I don't know if it's right. I can't. I don't know. But I used to read all the time. I used to read on the bus going to to work and coming home from work, and I read books in my lunch time. And uh, Mum always used to pick me up books from charity shops. And I used and I don't know if after she died I just couldn't read anymore. I don't know. But all I know is I read comic books, uh, but I find it hard getting into into normal books now. Anyway, PG Woodhouse, more PG Woodhouse there. All right, and this is uh, Colin Dexter little box set. Uh, who's who's his uh, Morse? I think it's Inspector Morse. I've read all those. Pretty sure I read the whole lot of those ones. The Inspector Morse books. Uh, Longitude again. We've got two copies of Longitude. How did that happen? <laughs> Interesting. Why have we got two copies of the same book? And a good old laugh. Humorous quotes about getting on a bit. <laughs> yeah. Right down here, uh, David Ambra. Uh, Adventures of a Young Naturalist. And this is uh, my housemate's book. She got this pub cats. It's basically cats in pubs in London. <laughs> so Carly loves pubs and she loves cats. So a perfect book for her. And down here we've got one called Trap Door. How will she survive now her life is no longer in her own hands? Hmm. Interesting. And some weird picture down here. <laughs> I'll let you look at that if you can make it out. <laughs> oh, what's this? This is a, probably a knitting book. Janet Lives with Mel and Griff. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's about, but those are a couple of comedians, uh, Mel Smith and Griff Reef Jones. They were, had lots of good TV shows. I'm not sure what this book is about. I might have to check that one out. Okay, so these books here are just um, you know, your graphic novels, your, your trades, really. So I'm not really going to go through those. I've got another English dictionary up there. Some comic book related books. I've got there yeah, the Lion Graphic Bible, which I borrowed off someone to, to have a look at, just because it's comic book related. And then they I never got around to get it back to them. They moved house, they run and they moved away. So I feel guilty about that. So <laughs> not that I not that I, not that I believe in heaven anyway, but I'm not gonna be able to go there now for stealing. <laughs> Alright. Uh, some science fiction art type books, some gum books there. I put that gum book uh, when I was writing some of my own role playing games, and I just wanted some information on weapons kind of thing. And there's a few art books there at the top. A few 2000 AD. Oh, come on, don't. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Just some old annuals from the 80s 80, 81, 82, 83, 85, 87, 88. Judge Dredd and uh, 2000 Annuals. There's some gaps there, I never thought about that. There's a Captain Britain Annual from 1978 there. Uh, yeah. The Official Superman Annual from 1980. <laughs> okay, so let's go through these. Lots of old, these are like some of the, my oldest books from my teenage years. So this is like an adventure game book. Revenge of the Red Dragon. One on one adventure game books. The further in a series of, yeah, from TSR. Games. I can't remember if I actually played that through or not. Might have tried once. And here's a couple of fantasy novel. The Mammoth Book of Short Fantasy Novels, presented by Isaac Asimov. Looks like it's got a bit of wet damage there. And here's uh, another Mammoth Book of Fantasy Novels. Classic fantasy. George MacDonald, William Morris, Robert E. Howard, L. Frank Baum, H.P. Lovecraft, Ursula K. Le Guin. This might be some of the first Lovecraft that I read, maybe. Though I recall there being a, a, a book of Lovecraft stuff uh, that my stepmom had. Right, this is from um, a role-playing game, Tunnels and Trolls, Grim Tooth's Traps 2, a Games Master aid for all role-playing systems. I don't know why I can... It says all role-playing systems. I don't know why I thought it was Tunnels and Trolls. But, uh, yeah, apparently any system can use it. But I, for some reason, I... Tied it up in my head to Tunnels and Trolls. Maybe I bought it at the same time that I bought Tunnels and Trolls. I'm not too sure. But yeah, that was quite fun. This was a book I really enjoyed. 
CJ Shera. I'm not sure that's about to be pronounced, but the Chronicles of Morgane. <laughs> so, and I kind of used characters from this book in my role playing games. I sort of, I just sort of adapted them and sort of said that it, I, I like gave them. This was their actual backstory. This, the, you know, they really were. It, you know, that was the idea anyway. Right, the Wilt Alternative, Tom Sharp. This is not really my book, but uh, obviously it's ended up on here for some reason. Like a comedic kind of writer. There's a couple of TV shows based on it. Right, and these are all mine as well. I've got tons of these adventure game books, um, fighting fantasy. So they're not in order in, on the shelf here. I think they might have been originally. This is number 23. Uh, number 21, Trial of Champions. Demons of the Deep, number 19. Probably only ever played once, most of these. Number 45, Spectral Stalkers. I think what I'll do, I'll put them back in order if I can. <laughs> Starship Traveller, number 4. It's got a different colour spine than all the others. That's quite, kind of annoying, slightly annoying. Right, uh, number 8, Scorpion Swamp. Love the art on that one. Caverns of the Snow Witch. House of Hell, a thrilling fantasy adventure in which you are the hero. I remember I used to do the, like, I used to read these out for my friends as well. I had a couple of old schoolmates that come over and I'd, I'd like, you know, run them through the adventures kind of thing and read them out to them. Uh, so this is The Forest of Doom, a classic one. Seas of Blood. <laughs> Rebel Planet. I did consider, like, doing, like, a... Video of, of one of these, like, and giving people the choices and like going on to the next, uh, next section, section kind of thing. <laughs> Freeway Fighter, this is obviously like a, a Mad Max kind of uh, style one. Uh, Death Trap Dungeon, a classic, just the names are you know, classic as well. Uh, Talisman of Death, Demons of the Deep. <laughs> Sword of the Samurai Oopsie Daisy Trial of Champions City of Thieves Space Assassin The Rings of Kefa The Riddling Reaver. Robot Commando. <laughs> I love that. It's got a dinosaur fighting a giant robot. What could be better? In fact, I think I used this one as a, this picture. Oh, my, I do my regular uh, heavy metal podcast things. And I, um, I use this picture for one of, the, uh, one of my podcast shows. <laughs> and I think I actually did a write-up to make it sound like it was a, a choose-your-own-adventure kind of write-up. Right, Creature of Havoc. Oh, Sword of the Samurai again. I'm sure I just showed that one, Sword of the Samurai. I think possibly my nephew might, because I, I lent a couple to my nephew, and um, yeah, they come back in not quite as good condition, actually. <laughs> a, couple, a few of the pages, I've lent in number one, a lot of the pages fell out of it. It was like, ugh. I don't know if they, because they're quite old, if they were you know original prints or anything like that, if they were worth anything, probably not. The Citadel of Chaos. That's a classic number two in the series, that one. Uh, Island of the Lizard King. So I'm wondering if maybe he gave me one of his books back as well by accident. I'm not too sure. Or it may have been a double that I picked up somewhere else. Temple of Terror. Appointment with Fear. That was a superhero related one where you could choose different powers. <laughs> um, Beneath Nightmare Castle. Crypt of the Sorcerer. Star Strider. The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. That's the first one. And the pages are all quite a lot of loose pages in there now after I lent it to my nephew. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind, Adam. I still love you. <laughs> right. Uh, have your own extraterrestrial adventure. So this is another kind of choose your own adventure kind of thing. Um, I'm guessing. 
Not too sure. <laughs> it's more like a storybook. But right, here's another like gaming related book. Uh, the Legends of Skyfall, The Black Pyramid. An advanced fantasy game book. Grail Quest, The Gateway of Doom, a solo fantasy game book. Uh, Grail Quest, Kingdom of Horror, another solo fantasy game book. Oops, sorry, I had to sit down there. And Grail Quest, Realm of Chaos. So, camera work's not the greatest. I'm not in a very good position, to be honest. Uh, Lone Wolf, book one, Flight from the Dark, a role-playing adventure by Joe Diva and Gary Chalk. Right, let's go down to the second story down, second shelf. Right. Demons and Dreams, the best fantasy and horror. There you go. I wonder if that's got a HP Lovecraft story in it as well. No, it doesn't seem to. No. Like these books, I read these loads of times, these ones. These are like a kid. I'm not sure if they ever got if they're still going or if they still ever get reprinted. But as um, a book set, The Crazy Magical Adventures of Captain Cobweb by Gordon Boschel. <laughs> I might show this for next cover slingers. He just says a captain cover. It could be a book cover, can't it? Can it not be a book cover? I think I might show one of these. And inside this, you've got Captain Cobweb's Cobra, Captain Cobweb's Cowboys, Captain Cobweb's Adventures, Captain Cobweb and the Red Transistor, and Captain Cobweb. Just, just Captain Cobweb. It's all torn up, though, and it's been chewed up by the looks of it. And, but I remember I used to read these to my little brother and sister as well. Gail and Stuart, I used to read these, these stories to them. I'm sure I remember. I mean, definitely Gail. Maybe, I think Stuart as well. But, uh, right, let's dig these out. Uh, the Artificial Kid by Bruce Sterling. A um, cyberpunk uh, story. Uh, Harry Harrison, Planet of the Damned, a sci-fi uh, guy who some of his stories were adapted to comics for 2000 AD. Uh, another fantasy saga of Old City, Great Hawk Adventures by Gary Gygax, the guy who actually created Dungeons and Dragons back in the day. This is another story that I picked out, and this is one that I read to my sister as well. We was on holiday in Mallorca. And I picked this one up at the, I don't know, in the, the, the airport maybe. And uh, this is the first story by Ian Banks, who went on, this is his first book. And he went on to lots and lots of more books. He did, as Ian Banks, he did like um, real world kind of stories. And as Ian M. Banks, he did science fiction. And yeah, I remember reading this Wasp, story, wasp Factory, my little sister, who wasn't really appropriate. <laughs> right, some C.S. Lewis, Prince Caspian. Couple of well, there's only one here so far. Oh, here's some more. Uh, Doctor Who and the Face of Evil by Terence Dix. I loved a bit of Doctor Who as a kid, and uh, Tom Baker was my favourite. And Leela, oh, oh, is it Leela? I forget. Yeah, Leela. Oh, oh, blame me. What can I say? Her and Wonder Woman. <laughs> All right, and the Brain of Morbius. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> right, so more C.S. Lewis, the Magician's nephew. Uh, the Travels of Oggy. I can't remember if I read this one. I remember my dad reading this to me. My dad read this to me. I remember we went to, was on holiday in Herm Bay, and he read me this book when I was in when I was going to sleep. So this is really old. But I kind of never. I'm not sure if I ever read it myself. I remember thinking it was a bit of a sad story. So I didn't want to read it again because there was this like some like apparently like uh, gypsy folk would take uh, hedgehogs and cover them in clay and then cook them in the oven kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if this was real, uh, this is, uh, but this is one of the things I remember being in it. And it was like, no, don't kill Oggy. <laughs> I don't know if I ever went back to it. Right, time. Oh, there's two books there. I'm messing you. Oh, stuck together slightly. Oh, God, they're stuck together. Uh, time Machine Free, Sword of the Samurai, from the publisher of Choose Your Own Adventure. This book is a time machine. Travel back 350 years and become a samurai. And that kind of stuck to this one, so it's a bit damaged now. I don't remember this. Being Interplanetary Spy, Space Olympics. You track down the villain. The third Scorching Saga in the Sensational Voyager Trilogy. Voyager in Bondage by Simon Finch. I think this is kind of a, this is kind of adulty kind of, yeah. It's kind of adulty kind of fantasy with like lots of, yeah. 
It talks about the Feast of Harlots, through dungeons of bordellos, through danger and depravity, you must journey across the ancient world. Yeah. Right, this was another uh, writer that I used to love. I used to get loads of these out from the um, out from the library, and I ended up buying quite a few myself. I wonder if some books are missing as well, you know? But, so this is Elephant Adventure by Willard Price, and he did like loads of stories. So it was all something adventure. It will be in like an animal or a country plus adventure would be the title and there was two brothers what are called hunt helen roger what was their surname i can't remember now but yeah it was just like t two kids like with animals and going on adventures kind of thing and they were just cool stories i liked them ah i remember reading them a lot as a kid here's another one diving adventure I remember in this one, one of the boys gets his foot stuck in a giant clam underneath the sea and he's running out of oxygen and his brother's trying to get him out. <laughs> I remember that. Right, there's another one of those uh, fantasy, half porn, half fantasy, uh, Hunters of Gore. Right, this is another one that I bought from the um, charity shop, not charity shop, from a jumble sale. Same time probably, well, very much in the same period as when I bought the... Um, the Vampirilla that I showed you already. This is Kofar, Barbarian Swordsman. Of all the mighty fantasy heroes, the greatest of them all. Uh, by Gardner F. Fox, who did loads of comic books. At that time, I probably didn't know he did comic books, but only from like knowing comic books now, I realised, oh, that's the same guy, did Kofar. And uh, obviously like a, a take on Conan. And in fact, his, these stories from, from Kofar have been adapted as Conan stories in the Conan comic books. So I really love this. I've read this a few times. I might have to dig it out again, read it again. But yeah, I think there's three stories in this one, if I recall. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's got a little plate in front in it where um, I've like claimed it as mine. I can't bear to be without my books. This book belongs to G.R.J. Fraser. <laughs> oh, man. Just getting a, just getting a thrill right to look at some of my old books. Uh, this has seen better days. It feels like it might want to fall apart if I'm not careful. <laughs> right, next lot of books. Uh, they're all falling down there. Right, here's a Lone Wolf book five, Shadow on the Sand by Joe Diva and Gary Chalk. Um, oh, it's got a piece of paper in it. I don't know what that was about. It's the bookmark. I thought it might be some where well, I played the game. Well, right, here's uh, Harry Harrison again. You can be the Stainless Steel Rat, an interactive game book. Stainless Steel Rat is one of his stories that was adapted a few times for 2000 AD. Uh, I remember reading this one. I think I read this one on a holiday. Uh, Black Easter and the Day After Judgment. Kind of uh, James Blish. Uh, kind of like horror. I think one of them, Black Easter, was like the devil or the Antichrist coming to, to Earth. Uh, Saga, the Barbarian Game Book. The Ice Dragon by Gary Gargax and Flint Deal. The Way of the Tiger One, Avenger, the number one adventure game series. So a lot of these old books here are kind of like books that you read and play at the same time. Right, Steve Jackson, Fighting Fantasy, the introductory role-playing game. So is this a game system? It's interesting. Can't remember it now. Uh, Power of Three. Obviously another fantasy kind of one. Shadows of Sanctuary. The most notorious town in the Rankan Empire. Sanctuary by Robert Asprin. It's got some damage on it, but it must have stuck to the book in front of it. Probably got a bit damp up here, I say. And this is another one, Tales from the Volga Unicorn. The Volga Unicorn was the name of the pub, the inn, in this uh, feast world. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've read them. But they were quite interesting stories. Uh, another Golden Dragon fantasy game book, number six, Castle of Lost Souls. Dave Morris and Eve Noonan. Oh, is this the... Yeah, this is the series which I l loved. I think these were better even than the fighting fantasy. This was an English kind of version. Um, Dave Morris and Oliver Jackson. These were really cool. I actually did a story about the not story, but in my English class, the lit, English literature, and I said, I said, choose a book you want to write about and do a write-up on it. So I did a write-up on these, Golden Dragon Fantasy Game Books. Number one, Crypt of the Vampire by Dave Morris. These are like, choose your own adventures again. Number two, The Temple of Flame. 
And these guys, Dave Morris and Oliver Johnson, they went on to do my most played role-playing game. It was um, better than Dungeons & Dragons. It's called Dragon Warriors. Much better fighting system. Uh, the Lord of Shadow Keep. Many, many hours pl spent playing Dungeons and Dragons. So, Dragon Warriors, I mean. Uh, the Eye of the Dragon. Uh, Curse of the Pharaoh by Oliver J Johnson. And the one I already showed you, Castle of Lost Souls, if someone called Eve Noonan came into the, the writing mix. Yeah. Oh. Actually, maybe I'll do a. Maybe I do one of those. Oh, sugar. Ah. Maybe I do one of those uh, instead of a fighting fantasy. Right. Oh, everything's falling over now. Okay. Science fiction omnibus. Isaac Asimov's Magical Wells of Fantasy, Cosmic Nights. Another fantasy, Snow Castles by Duncan McGeary. Right, and some Douglas Adams. Probably the rest of it might be Douglas Adams. Uh, Mostly Harmless, the fifth book in his increasingly inaccurately named Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy. <laughs> this is the fourth book, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. Uh, Life, the Universe and Everything. The restaurant at the end of the universe. And The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The first book. And then we have this, yeah, and another thing. Douglas Adams' is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, part six of three. So this was basically someone else took over right in, in that universe. Eon Colfer. Oin Colfer, how do you pronounce it? Author of the Artemis Fowl series. Apparently he took over uh, doing the Hitchhiker's Guide books. Uh, which is fair enough. Right, and then we've got some Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Again, Douglas Adams, a couple of cool TV series. There's a BBC series, which was really good. And also the American version of Dirk Gently was pretty decent as well. Uh, and then there's the, no, the second Dirk Gently. I think you died while he was writing the third one. So Douglas Adams, The Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul. And the last book is my first copy of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the hardback copy. So this is pretty old. I don't know, I doubt if it's the first pressing or anything like that. Let me have a quick check. Ah, uh, oh, that's sad. This was a present from my aunt who died uh, last year. <sighs> Sorry. To my blue-eyed Graham from his silly auntie Ian. That's Christmas 1980 when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> okay so that's it that's all the books and all the trips down memory lane actually let me just show you the dragon warriors books all right so here's some of the dragon warriors books unfortunately one and two are around leases um so the ultimate role-playing game dragon warriors book 3d elven crystals out of the shadows the power of darkness and Land of Legend. So that's it. Cheers for watching. Bye. Thank you for looking at my books. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please put a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Oh yes, thank you for watching my video. You rock. Yeah.